so uh, a good evening again i will not make the same prop issue of telling good morning anymore good evening <laughs> <laughs> and good welcome morning. to melo welcome michael welcome sunai welcome petro in the discipleship uh, uh, bible study as we can say and as we always organize in ourselves we will have uh, three uh, categories of session this evening the first part is where we study more about our church the second part is where we study the bible and the third part is where we are going to pray and uh, without wasting our time uh, may i uh, request to melo to open up with a prayer this evening please oh i think i was muted <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. Okay. Yes. Okay, now I'm fine. Everyone can hear me, eh? Yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. Um, I'm just going to open it now. Father, we thank you for another opportunity, Father, to worship you and praise you, Lord. We come to the foot of your throne, Father. We come humbly, Lord. We put our minds, our wills at your feet, Lord. Impart with us the knowledge and the wisdom of yourself, Lord. Teach us more about you. Let us have a fruitful study, Father. Bless the reading of your word. We thank you, Father, for the beautiful rain that we had this week. We thank you for the time we have together, Father. Let us not take it for granted, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we still have to worship and together as groups to worship your name, Lord. We thank you, Father, and ask for your blessings and thank you. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I will pause temporarily the, the, the video. I will pause temporarily the video because I will request us to 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 make some testimonies of how you have been and I don't want those testimonies to go uh, live somewhere. So okay. I am going to record now, start recording. So to encourage you who is going through tribulation, as, as I said, I invite you to go with me in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalms 34 and uh, the verse eight. And this is what it says on the verse eight. Uh, let me, do you see it or has it stopped? Let me share again okay and this is what it says oh test and see that the lord is good blessed is the man who trust trusts in him and i always tell to people trust is a very difficult word because you cannot use the word trust unless there is uh, a, uh, a test a trial behind it you cannot trust me unless you give me 100,000 runs and you believe me that I will bring you back that 100,000 runs in five days. So unless you do that uh, experience with me by giving me that amount, then you really don't trust me yet. Trust is like when Sunai is alone and Judah is not with her and when a lot of young men are, are trying to cut hair and say that they, they love her. And soon I say, no, I have a husband and I trust in my husband. I love my husband. Trust is only gained when you really are tested. And that is why God is putting us under, allowing to put us under treasure, uh, pressures so that our trust in him will be proven that it is true or it is wrong. And that is why a lot of people they believe in jesus easily but when they are going through trials and tribulations then they started to say i don't dare to do to to go in this direction and that is exactly the reason i would like us to to review what we are supposed to read today uh, please give me a time when we come back again with uh, the message that I shared last week. The message that we studied last week was 
the cost of discipleship. A lot of us are happy and 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 glad to uh, glad to say yes, I will follow you, Jesus, and I will be your disciple. But how many of us will be willing to pay the cost of discipleship? And the cost, as we say it here, is the self denial and sacrifice you need to accept the sacrifice and it says on in right here the true disciple will face opposition for standing out from the crowd exactly when 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 zacchaeus uh face the challenge and i would like us to to go into the book of uh, luke so that we can understand what it says here in the book of luke chapter 19 and the verse uh, 2 and this is what it says there was a man Zacchaeus who was a thief tax collector and he was rich and he sought to seek Jesus was but could not because of the crowd and for he was short stature when you start to decide to seek for Jesus two things will happen to you in your life the first thing is people will be in, in opposing against you and those people were always happy with you before but when you decided to move with a new faith with a new belief then they start to block you from seeing that jesus and those people the crowd that we see here are people who are also following jesus that means then that your own Christian people can be unhandering a block for you to not to see Jesus. And those crowd can be seven the Adventist people as well who can block you from seeing Jesus Christ. Don't think that because you are in the seven of the Adventist church, then you will not be armed. No, it can be the opposite. When you go in the Adventist church, some people will not even recognize you they will not even greet you and because of the way you look because of the way uh, you are walking or talking they will hate you just like that and without any explanations but like zacchaeus you cannot stop there you have to see that jesus when you look for that jesus for your home the second person and reason that can block you from seeing Jesus is yourself it says he was short of stature we have a lot of iniquities in us sometimes we have still that abilities of smoking or drinking or having that way of lying or always spending time and wasting time in the way that is not pleasing God and that uh, iniquity or that shortnessness in us is causing us not to meet Jesus and we always tend to tell let me wait for myself to be pure before I accept Jesus but you will never be able to be pure unless you accept to go forward first and then Jesus himself will clean you so today I am my my first call for you today is do not be discouraged because of people and number two do not be discouraged of of yourself no matter what can be your challenges no matter what you you are going through god can save you and the decision that zacchaeus took was a powerful one he said so he ran ahead the first thing that you need to do if people are blocking you run ahead of them don't follow what they do the challenge that we do is this if someone is is not greeting me i will not greet that person anymore uh, also and that is the wrong decision when they block you do not follow them instead run ahead of them so greet them run ahead of them that is the, 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 the aspect that the good Christian when we change then you go ahead of people you do not you are not accepting to be influenced by anyone rather you will be the one who will influence them 
by the way that you are behaving, by the way that you are living. That is a Christian. A Christian is a leader, is not a follower. You lead people to Jesus. The second thing that happened in Zacchaeus was he climbed up. He climbed up into a sycamore and a tree. And I always ask people, what would you think if the my, you see the mayor of Pretoria climbing a tree in front of people? I, I see Sunai wa, sma, wa, uh, laughing and Tumelo laughing as well. And I imagine as well Michael and Petro smiling and laughing behind. Because it is not fit for him as his statue to climb a tree. But because of seeing Jesus, he, he was willing to pay any cost because of Jesus. And my question today as well, what do you think is foolishness in your life? Are you willing to pay that cost for you to see that Jesus? Remember, there are a lot of sycamores in the place where Jesus was visiting in Jericho. But only one sycamore tree is able to make, you, to make you see Jesus. There are a lot of days during the week, but only one single day that the Lord has accepted as holy in front of him on the Sabbath day. There were a lot of tents in the time of Israelites, but only one tabernacle tent was where the place of God showing and appearing. There were a lot of mountains in the time of Israelites, but only one single mountain called Sinai is where God is. So. There are a lot of fake things beyond us, surrounding us, but only one is the genuine and the true one. So you need to find that place where you can meet with God. It can be a time, it can be a place, it can be a sacrifice where you sacrifice your time to pray, to, to sleep, you sacrifice your time to eat for you to study your Bible. But accept the sacrifice so that you can meet with that Jesus. Now, uh, I am ending here. 12 minutes I studied. So today, I am talking about the cost of discipleship. So that you understand that there is a cost behind it. Nothing is free, even if God gave it for free. There is always a cost behind it. Do you have any um any comments regarding what we have discussed here any additions of what we have uh, spoken about you can unmute yourself please oh. yes yes, yes. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. sorry sorry no tomorrow you can go i was just saying i don't have anything <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Thanks. No, I think uh, it, it's very real that uh, there's a, a very big cost to, I guess, um, choosing to follow Jesus and choosing to be on a different path uh, as to the, the I guess, the, the rest of the crowd. Or thing. And you always continuously, I guess, have to make that decision because uh, for me, it's that it's a decision you make, I guess, daily, a decision you have to make at work almost every hour and day uh, in how you react, how you, because you can get a lot of opposition and some of it, some of the stuff's not even like, I guess, spiritual related, it's just like um, character building type of stuff, like the certain things that people will do, maybe people have, uh, at work and you, the way in which you react is supposed to show who you actually you follow and things like that. So for me, it's 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 it, there's there's a self sacrificial thing that you have to do, even with simple decisions like being being manageable at work or I don't know how to say, it, but just showing the different character and the different side side of you, not being like everyone else. When someone does something weird to you at work, you don't repay it, you're doing something weird to them as well. So it's, but that, again, it takes a sacrifice. Like I know for me, it's like 
not easy to just like back down and not be, I guess, not really you walk you, you walked over, but um, not repaying an eye for an eye type of thing. And it's it's like that for me. And other things as well can be spiritual as well, like um, making time to to those are small fights that we actually like. How you said we are our own stumbling blocks. So sometimes making time during the day to say, look, this is my prayer time. Making time to be conscious of what you're doing in Christ. Like, what am I doing? Is this like just be conscious about what you're doing, how you're doing. There's this um, quote I can't remember where it's from. It's in the Bible. It says, uh, I think it's Corinthians. In whatever you do, I'm paraphrasing, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And I think it's in Corinthians, Corinthians too. So that's something that kind of always running uh, in the background. Sometimes, obviously, uh, I fail. And after the fake time side, you're like, oh, yeah, no, I didn't really act appropriately at that point in time. But I guess the it's like how you say it, right? It's following him and not getting lost in the crowd. So you always have to, even when you, I guess, do the wrong thing unintentionally, it's that coming back and saying, Lord, yo, I really replied to this person in a way that isn't becoming of your disciple. Forgive me. If you can tell the other person as well, sometimes you don't have to just accept and then, you know, keep moving. So it it, it takes some level of self-sacrifice and self-consciousness to be able to know that stuff. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's yes. all I say. Other people as well, any comments regarding what we have learned today? So if you go through challenges, look unto Zacchaeus. He can teach you something. Yes, Michael? Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, the one will be based on the on the other one, on the first one. So, uh, my question is, what did you mean with with Zacchaeus? Uh, you know, stumbling with himself. Mm-hmm. I'm just putting that in my own words. What did you mean with that? Um, let me explain it. There are a lot of people who are still smoking and still drinking, for example. And those kind of people, they said, let me wait for myself to stop stop completely smoking before I come to Jesus. Or let me stop drinking completely before I come to Jesus. And in the book Step to Christ, it says, you come to Jesus not after you repent. But you come to Jesus and the love of Jesus will lead you to repentance. And that is why the the stumbling block that is yourself is you you recognize your limitness. Uh, Your limit. You recognize also your weaknesses. And because of those weaknesses, you don't dare to 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 take the decision to follow fully Jesus. And that is why... It can be yourself, myself, uh, that can be my own stumbling block. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so I like how you answered that because that sort of gives me a, 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 a segue into my into my question. So, what if someone is smoking and drinking, right? Mm-hmm. And add ten or twenty more things to that, and then. They, they they come to Jesus as they are, right? As we should mm-hmm. come. Not mm-hmm. as we should stay, but as we, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they, after coming, um, they stop these habits because they have conviction, they realize it's wrong, and mm-hmm. a whole list of other good biblical reasons, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, along the way, there's this, uh, every now and then, they get really tired of the... Um, the struggle against okay, saying no to those things, mm-hmm. but on, but not like once every three months, mm-hmm. maybe three times a day or seven times a day or 10 times a day until it becomes, it, it wears that person out. And mm-hmm. uh, so, so, so then when that person says, but yo, ish, because you know, in my mind, 
being a stumbling block to yourself or preventing yourself can play out in many ways. Mm-hmm. It can prevent you, you, you to come into Christ initially. It can cause you to stop coming to Christ, etc. Mm-hmm. So, so what would you say to such a person? What would you say? Because I, I think that uh, everyone experiences this in some, some way, the principle. So what would you say to that? Yes, yeah, ex- exactly. Um, when you look at uh, this experience of, of going to Jesus, um, I, I read the book today and it says human being is very simple, but also the most complex thing on earth. To tell that you cannot have an answer to something. Because, and that's the reason it is very difficult to say my experience i share it to you not because you have to follow it but my yeah. experience i share it to you to tell to you that the spirit who led me can also work and help you and 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 and, and the, the most beautiful part of 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 of, of experience is what it says in 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 the book uh, step to christ and uh, let me uh, tell you uh, share with you uh, you see, uh, I will be sharing with you the, the, what I have on my screen. And it says here, and it says here, Repentance includes sorrow for sin and the turning away from it. We shall not renounce sin unless we see its sinfulness. Until we turn away from it in heart, there is no real change in the life. You can see. So you can deceive yourself by telling, I follow Jesus. But there is no real change until you recognize how bad is that sin. And by recognizing that how bad is that sin is only found when you walk with Jesus. And it says, there are many who fail to understand the true nature of, uh, nature of repentance. Multitude sorrow that they have sinned and even make an outward reformation because they fear that the wrongdoing will bring suffering upon themselves. They fear the consequences of what they do. But this is not repentance in the Bible sense. They lament by the suffering rather than the sin. Such was the grief of Esau when he saw that the birthright was lost for him to forever. Balaam, terrified by the angel standing in the pathway with drawn sword, sword, acknowledged his guilt lest he should lose his life. But there was no genuine repentance in, in uh, repentance for sin. No conversion is proposed, purpose, no abhorrence of evil. Judas Iscariot, after betraying his Lord, exclaimed, I have sinned. In that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And it says the confession was forced from his guilty soul by an awful sense of condemnation and a fearful look, uh, looking for the, for the judgment. And that is why we have to, to be careful. There is a fear of judgment, a fear of consequences, and there is a repentance. Those are two, two different things. And many people, they stop doing a thing because they fear a consequence because they fear that they will be caught, caught doing the thing. But the, the repentance that is a, a real repentance is when you fear God and not the consequences. And to explain it to you, uh, let me stop the screen and to explain it to you. Uh, this is what Goliath said to David. If you kill me, the entire Philistines will serve you. But if I, ca- if I kill you, then we will serve you. That is what it's, uh, you will serve us. That is what it says. And David said, is it not good that you kill Goliath and you receive a lot of slaves with you? Is it not good? But David found that deal very dangerous because when he found that one, he said, no, I will not accept that deal. I will kill you and I will exterminate the Philistines as well. 
this is it we have a big goliath in us that big goliath can be for example watching porn or that big goliath can be smoking or that big goliath can be drinking and those things if people found you with them you will be in trouble and you stop those goliath because you can be caught and you you defeat the goliath but then satan says goliath is died now but there are small philistines in you that you can still they can still serve you and those small philistines can, can be something like you cherish alone at two o'clock in the morning when no one will see it and the small philistines says we will still be with you but the decision that david took was harsh and the right one he says i will kill you goliath and i will exterminate as well the small philistines so when you want to 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 defeat uh to 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 overcome your 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 past you have to defeat two things the big one where people can see that you have completely changed and the small one where no one will be seeing it even if you you still continue to do it and that that can to tell to you you can be so seen in front of people that you don't smoke anymore but no one will see you in your room at at one o'clock in the morning and that is why those you you have to defeat goliath and also the small philistines for you to completely surrender to god and that is why there is uh, a verse that i would like to share with you today um, before we end here and that verse is very powerful very very powerful and it says let me share with with you it is in the book of uh, james i think okay um just a second okay it's not this one um let me find tandy i was sending it to her okay the james okay. one right it is uh i'll done a second i have already did it like this okay so that it will help you to to, to review it this is what i shared with uh, one of our sister as well to encourage her it says therefore submit to god the first thing that you do is not to repent but to submit to god after you submit to god then you need to resist the divine that is the secret if you change the order of that action then there is a false repentance but the first thing that you need to do is submit to god then after that resist the divine and he will flee away from you and number three draw near to god you don't only submit to god you come closer to god and coming closer to god is called step to christ you come step by step closer to jesus and that is why you come closer to him and it says and he will draw near to you when you come to jesus the second reaction is he comes closer to you and you will you will meet sooner than, than you expect and then it says cleanse your hand why god has not says cleanse your hands and then submit to god it means then that the process of cleaning ourselves is after you submit to god so you submit to god you resist the divine then you come closer to jesus and as you come closer to him you clean your hands so you don't wait for your hands to be clean before you come to jesus and it says you sinners and purify your hearts as you come to jesus as well not only the hands that are act, uh, affecting the, the actions needs to be clean but you also need to change your mind heart is not exit uh, really hard it is the mind and you need to purify your heart and it says you double-minded the problem of double-minded is this you worship god and you also fulfill your own satisfaction and that is why those kind of christians are very dangerous you they saw the piety of jesus 
at church there is no holy person like them but when they are alone it is a different person and that is why it says you need to have integrity integrity means to be one not to have two personalities one at church and one you will be when you will uh, you are alone integrity means you are one ever there is someone who is watching you or not and then it says lament and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom humble yourselves in the sight of the lord and he will lift you up so this process is a deep process that we need to follow you submit to god you resist the divine you draw near to god and you clean your hand you purify your heart and then you 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 stop your 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 uh, a bit of always being um, entertained. I think that is what uh, the Apostle James is telling here. Someone who is always laughing and also, uh, uh, also uh, always being relaxed is someone who is entertained. And that is why he said, stop the entertainment, lament, mourn and weep and humble yourself and God will, will lift you up. I hope uh, that that long explanation will help you to to see exactly the path of of what a Christian needs to 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 do for him to change. So as I I, I always say there, do not wait for for the little Philistine to be completely exterminated before you come to God. Do not wait for completely being pure before you come to God. Come to Jesus as you are. I don't find it in the book of uh, uh, Come to Jesus. Maybe I can find it, but we are uh, running out of time. Come to Jesus. Uh, I come to Jesus. I cannot find it. I cannot find it in the book, but in the book it says, uh, Come to Jesus as you are. And when you come to Jesus as you are, it is the duty, the part of the covenant of Jesus to change you. And that is why uh, David says, create in me a new heart. You will never be able to create, have a new heart. It is God himself and his ability as a creator who will create a new heart in you. And then when you have a new heart, then you will completely change. So your duty is just to surrender and come to jesus and then the duty of jesus is to change you and make you in his image i hope i i have been a little bit clearer my brother michael yes you can unmute now we are uh, already two minutes before ta after time but oh, sorry. Uh, you can still speak yes my brother so so i was saying that you I've said a whole lot of useful things, uh, all of it actually. But what I'm talking about is not someone that that pretends on the outside they are changed, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone that what wants to serve God in private and in public, mm -hmm. but they are assailed by the enemy like this every day. No days have a rest. Maybe on Sabbath, maybe a little bit less than the rest of the days. And then eventually that parent person gets weary of this constant attack, constant attack, constant attack, constant attack. So my question was that what do you do? What, what does that person do? Because the thing is, that person is swimming. Mm -hmm. And eventually mm -hmm. they get tired Sometimes. of swimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they get pulled down and then they busy dying. So then they have a choice to come back to God and then they repent. And that's all good. They should. Right? Mm -hmm. If they really mm -hmm. love God, they will repent. Okay, so they do what they need to do, what they know they should do, what they want to do because they love God. But yeah, th this cycle keeps repeating itself until they get worn out, right? Yeah. And not even just even falling into sins, but also like just being tempted by sins until you that person just feels like you know, ah, because like just like you said, like God changes a person's heart. You don't change your own heart. You cannot yes. change your, yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you before. must be willing, willing, a willing participant. 
But now how 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 if you are still in the process of being changed and you are growing weary? So what my question is, how does that person endure? I think that is a better way of asking. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, uh, may I uh, request everyone if we can extend about 10 minutes more? Sure. So that we can finish this. Yes. Yeah, sure. yeah thank um, you so much. Yes, my brother Tomelo, you have raised your hands. Yeah, you so can I, speak. No. Unless if I can learn. Okay, cool. Um, I'll attempt to try and answer you, I guess. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. personally, something that I've also gone through this iteration. So I guess the first thing that, and I, I, I mean, this is talking maybe from a personal experience, or, but the first thing that you have to sort of realize, I would say to a person like that, it, is it, it isn't easy. Uh, it's not an easy walk, but it gradually gets a little bit easier iteratively. So as you iterate and iterate, it gets easier. Something that um, Terry said, um, I guess the first thing is that, what he said, that submission, right? So in submission, you're saying, Lord, your will is greater than mine. So I am choosing to follow you. And I've got this stuff that is, so I, I, you make the decision, intuitive decision, yeah, I'm following Jesus and I want to do the right things and, 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 and you kind of cast those things away, right? But there's the stuff lingering in the background. And that's almost like, how do I say, um, so if I take a bit of a longer read around this, it's like, I think there's that passage that says, um, my burden is light and my, you know that oxen one, like my burden is light and my yoke is easy type of thing. Sometimes we, as ourselves make the burden a little bit harder on ourselves because there's some things that we actually cherish. So there was a, I can't remember if it was Thierry or someone that was listening to one of the pastors took like a cup, right? Like a cup like this, and they filled it up with water. And you can imagine like this cup is you, right? And the, I guess juice, let's say the juice is all the bad stuff, like all the cherished things, everything, and you decide to follow Jesus, right? Turn over the cup, there's nothing inside, right? So it's empty. So now you're in an empty vessel. You are continuing in your journey. You've decided to follow Christ, and that's good. You're continuing with the journey. You've gotten rid of your, I guess, the cherished type of sins that you have, but you haven't filled your cup with anything. And your responsibility, and that's part of the submission, as I guess, as a Christian, is to start filling the cup with everything that God wants so that by the time these things of the past want to get back into the cup, the cup is full. There's no space for, um, I guess, anything other than what you filled it, which would be the love for Christ, because that should propel you to want to learn more. And I guess um, one other thing that I would say that speaks to that is that he said, a fear for God. I think, yes, a fear for God is the right verbiage, but it's more of a love for God. So your love for God should deter you from even, I say this loosely, even participating in that in future. So it's not going to be a, and for some people, God bless, it is something like, oh, I used to love smoking and I came into the Lord and I stopped smoking instantaneously. For other people, Yes, I stopped for six months, and after six months, I relapsed. But your first, then I relapsed after, then I stopped again. Then I relapsed after a year. Then I stopped again. Then I relapsed after three years. So in every iteration, it's supposed to get less and less, and that what's supposed to spur you is that love for Christ, that what am I doing this? What, what is the actual, out, what is my intended outcome for this? With, as I said again, with some people it's instantaneous and with some people it's an easier decision to make and say, um, no, I'm done with this. Like, I'm totally done with this. I'm not doing it anymore. And for some other people, and it's part of, I guess sometimes it's part of the journey that God takes you through to teach you more about yourself and to, to so for you to learn more about him and to love him. So he'll work the journey with you and you'll be able to see yourself and see 
how you've grown and grown and how you've been able to trust in the Lord. So many times when it gets to a point, you're like, actually, this has no hold over me. But it's not, as I say, for some people, it's super easy. They come into the Lord, it's done. For some people, because I we are like that oxen, we fight it, right? Even though you, you, you commit yourself to the Lord and everything, you're still fighting and you're not trusting 100% or whatever it is. Not, I don't want to use trust, but it's, it's just the human nature, right? And that journey of you getting to the place where that sin doesn't have any hold on you is the walk that God chooses for you. That's what I found in my, I think, in my experience. I hope that kind of like gives mm-hmm. um, Thank some, you. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Tumelo. Yeah, uh, in, in addition to what Tumelo said as well, I found the verse that I was looking for. Uh, it says exactly, and that challenge, it was not only me or my girl who is struggling and says, oh, wretched man as I am, wretched man as I am. You remember the song Amazing Grace when it says, it is i am a wretched and it says wretched man as i am who will deliver me from this body of death i thank god through jesus christ our lord so then with the mind i myself serve the law of god but with the flesh the law of sin which uh, apostle paul said here you will never be able to get rid of that body of death which is yourself unless through jesus christ and that is why i understand very well the question of of michael in in first john chapter 2 and the verse 1 uh, john is giving a promise my little children these things i write to you so that you may not sin because you have accepted jesus already and he says and if anyone sins which means my brother michael we will always sin even if we struggle there is always that sin in us and as you say we struggle sometimes we are sinking but jesus is taking us up again and the 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 best uh, story that we can show is peter who was compared with peter when i ask you who is the best disciple of jesus you will tell me surely peter but who did the worst uh uh, let me say treason against jesus it was peter but big big peter was uh, taken up from jesus and and jesus wanted him to 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 repent and then when jesus went out of the tomb he says tell to the disciple and tell peter that i am coming and then peter when he heard about it he met with jesus and when he met with jesus what happened he came back, he returned back into the, 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 the life of, 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 um, of uh, what is it called again, of a fisherman again. You remember in, in John chapter 21, he returned in his uh, pre- pre- previous life and then Jesus came in, 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 in the sore, in the board. And when he met with Jesus, he forgot his, his need and he came to meet with Jesus. And when he came to meet with Jesus, Jesus asked him, Do you love me? You remember, it is the second time that Peter uh, sinned against Jesus. And after the third repentance, when he completely accepted Jesus, then he was completely transformed and he baptized 3,000 people. And this is what it says. If anyone sins, and this sin that it says here is no more, the same as the sin on the top. The sin here is when you struggle and you still sa- sin. This is a non-intentional sin. It says we have an advocate with the Father Jesus the righteous. And he himself is appropriation for our sins and not for our only, but also for the world. So to tell to us, a Christian is not a perfect person. person. A Christian is a sinner who is struggling to become in the image of Jesus. And until he met with the real Jesus, he will still, he is still, Jesus is still perfect in him. 
if you defeat one sin there is another sin you defeat the second sin there is a third one you defeat the third one and that is why it says jesus is putting his glove on you uh in 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 the book of obje uh, object christ object lesson it says that jesus is putting his gloves uh let me say f what you call it uh, uh stitch by stitch if i can say so that you, you at the end you will completely be gloved but at the beginning you will still come back in the the, the previous uh, yourself but jesus will transform you completely i think time is uh short today and i thank you for the question it is wonderful and i am willing to come back with the same uh, discussion next week if you wish we can uh, go deeper in this action but what we have taken from from the lesson of of, of today is is a powerful one and if uh, i may ask sister petro petro to read for us this uh this verse one more time and then i will ask uh, michael to pray for us today uh, sister petro if you may read the verse 7 to 10 one more time please and michael will end the prayer well, therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw near to god and he will draw near to you Change your hands, you, sin you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to, uh, to mourning. Uh, um, turn to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Amen. Yes, Michael, you can lead us into prayer. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, Bible study that we received. The truths that you imparted to us, help us to, to impart them by our words, attitudes, and actions, and even our thoughts, Father, uh, as that we may so shine our lights before men that they may glorify you our father in heaven and heavenly father the uh the question that i asked um is not specifically tailored to me um the things that we learned this evening is not tailored just for uh specific to me but it's tailored to everyone is what i want mm -hmm. to say and yet each one has this struggle in their own uh you know ex they, they have experienced it in their own way and there's nothing under the sun that I can tell you, but I mentioned this, Father, and I ask that you will help us to, to not forget what we learned Amen. and to to put these things in practice, but um, also especially when they are most essential, Father, like we were speaking, um, that we may be the same and have integrity in private and in public. Mm -hmm. And Father, you had the prayers that ascended previously um when we split up to pray i thank you for the prayers i thank you for everyone that attended i ask that you'll bless each one very richly and especially um brother tiri but also each person that participated here as families and um those who so um bountifully they had um they lacked nothing for them and, and we sowed our time and we trust you that you will use that to change us and to make us and through us others the people whom you want them to be uh, using us as your instruments in jesus name i pray this and we glorify you we thank you amen amen thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much and uh, um i mean 